So cross multiplying doesn't only help you in math, it will help you in physics and chemistry as well. So whenever you want to isolate the variable, cross multiplying the way to go. So there are four different layouts for cross multiplying, and I'm going to show you those in the first four examples that I have on the board there. But then I'm just going to do two more that are a little bit more complicated than this, but the same thing applies. So watch this, it will help you a great deal solving for the variable in physics, chemistry, and also it will make your algebra and math a lot easier. Okay, so there we go. With the first one here, you have your variable right here and you wanna solve for it. So this is the easiest way to do it. It just cross multiply the nine in there. So the nine could just cross multiply. If it's on the bottom, when it crosses the equal signs, it goes to the top. So I'll have X equals nine times four, nine times five is 45, sorry. And you still have the three on the bottom and 45 divided by three is 15. How about if the equation written backwards like this where the X is on the right hand side of the uh, equation, the same thing applies. So you wanna isolate the X, as I said, anything that wants to cross the equal sign you just when it crosses if it's on the bottom it goes to the top that's all it needs to do so now it's on the bottom just goes to the top right there so you'll have 20 over 5 equals x and therefore x equals 4. how about if x is on the bottom so when x is on the bottom it involves moving just not one thing here if you notice we only moved one thing to isolate the x but here is going to involve a little bit more than that so you're free to cross the equal sign as long as if you're on the bottom, you go to the top. And if you're on the top, you go to the bottom. So to solve for X, definitely here, I don't want to see X on the bottom. I want it to move and go to the top. So the X will move there where the seven is. And at the same time, you know, you could do that. Eh? At the same time, seven could go where the X is. And also two, when I go right there, so I get two times 14, which is 28. And then the seven crosses where the X is. So we're going to have the seven here. And the X goes where the seven is. So we're only going to have X here. See, the two left, it went where the 14 is. The seven went down under the uh, under the 14. And then the X went right there. And automatically, the X is isolated right now. So again, you're free to cross as long as if you're on the bottom, you go to the top. OK, but the condition for these questions, though, you have to have one fraction on the left-hand side and one fraction on the right-hand side. You cannot have more than two fractions. So if, if let's say if I add a one right here to this, then you won't be able to do that anymore. Uh, you could either do common denominator and then cross multiply, or there's other strategies that you could use. Um, however, this is so easy to do, yet students don't know it. You know, it's it's so easy to do. And if you know it, it will save you a lot of time that you need during exams. So here, x would equal 28 divided by 7, x equals 4. You know, you could go four equals X or equals or X equals four is the same thing. How about if our unknown is on the bottom of the right side? Again, it's the same thing. So we want the X to cross there. We want the nine to cross there and we want the two to cross there. And then the X is isolated. So basically it's almost like, you know, these two exchange places, the two goes to the 18. So the X comes where the nine is, and then you have an equal sign. You know, everything is done simultaneously. You don't do it in steps. Uh, and the two gets multiplied into the 18, so that's 36. And after that, you still have the nine crossing down there. So they have a nine underneath, and therefore X would equal four. Simple, isn't it? That's uh, things that look a little bit complicated, but it's very simple to do. And if you learn to do it this way, algebra will become so much easier. Physics also, chemistry, because you know, in physics, a lot of times we have a variable that's stuck somewhere and we have to solve for it. And with cross multiplying, it will be a lot easier to do. Okay, so let's go to the harder questions or maybe a little bit more challenging than this and uh, we'll end it with that. So some students, what they like to do is uh, when they cross multiply, so let's start off with this. So here, we cannot, we don't have the X by itself. We have three that's stuck to the X. It's the same thing. You wanna move the two or definitely there and only move the three there, you remember if you're crossing the multiply, if you're crossing the equal sign, then if you're on the bottom, you go to the top. If you're on the top, go to the bottom. So some students like to kind of write it out. So it will be two times nine on top. And then the three goes to where the 12 is. 
And instead of multiplying top and bottom like this, they like to reduce from here. And, and that's what I like to do in myself. So my, the numbers don't get big on me because right now I see easy. Three goes into itself once, it goes into nine three times. Two goes into itself once, it goes into four twice. And therefore X equals three halves. The same thing here, if we have kind of the X on the bottom here, what I want to do is definitely I want the X to cross to go to the top, the five crosses here and goes to the bottom and eight crosses and goes to the 15. So therefore I'll have X here equals, you know, so the X just crosses there. The eight will cross there. And the five also will cross right there. So therefore X would equal eight times 15 over two, which just stays there, the two and times five. And then it's better to reduce now. So two goes into itself once, it goes into eight, four times, five goes into itself once, it goes into 15, three times, three times four is 12. Now, if you multiply in tops and you multiply in bottoms and reducing later, just the numbers get a bit big on you. And, and then you start struggling, looking for the factor that goes into both of them. So it's better to do it that way. Okay. And now here's a different scenario where the bottom now it's not, x or 2x or 3x it's, it's x minus 1 so it's a binomial so the same thing uh you the same scenario the same strategy that you do with cross multiplying except here you cannot just cross the x by itself because x is stuck to the minus 1 so it's x minus 1 and since x is minus 1 is on the bottom the whole thing here will have to cross to there the 5 will come where that is and the 3 will cross right there so let's look at this unfold. So 25, the three crosses to the 25 so it gets multiplied. The five is gonna cross where the X minus one is, and then the X minus one is gonna cross to where the five is. Problem becomes a lot easier now. Reduce, that's one, that's five. So I have five times three, 15 over one, which is 15 equals X minus one. And therefore X would equal 16. I hope you enjoyed watching this. It will help you a great deal. I know for sure. And again, I want to thank you for watching my videos and don't forget to support us uh, or support me on my YouTube channel. My boy comes out once a while and does a, a YouTube video as well. Uh, he hasn't uh, for the whole summer and now he's almost ready to come back and help me out. But anyways, please don't forget to uh, hit that like button, share with family and friends and subscribe to my channel. Then next time, bye-bye.